To further discuss the MPC meeting today, I'm being joined on the News at 10 by the Managing Director and Chief Executive of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Bismarck Rawani. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, and I appreciate the efforts you made this evening considering yeah. the traffic outside. Um, so were you surprised by the MPC decision today? No, not at all. The options are few and the, op the choices are hard. So they were not going to do anything different. However, there was, there's something that you have to take note of. Um, the diagnosis as far as the central bank is concerned is that there's high inflation, there's um, reserves need to be, there has to be accretion of reserves, and also that um, the foreign exchange rate has to be stabilized. The real economic problems of Nigeria today is that there's a recession, which means there's a contraction in economic activity, there is high unemployment and high underemployment, and there's an erosion of confidence in the system. Nigeria needs to go and borrow internationally. Next week, they're going to the roadshow. Therefore, the, the monetary policy diagnosis is totally different from what you call the broad diagnosis of the problem, which is both fiscal, monetary, and trade. Now, what needs to be done? Um, basically, in the end, are Nigerians going to wake up tomorrow and find that their lots is better? No. The power market traded at 4.98 this afternoon. Mm -hmm. The implied exchange rate in the interbank market is 305, but you will not get it. And you need, it, you need to be allocated either because of raw materials or what have you. Mm -hmm. But these are good, they are good intentions. But the market structure and the market process needs to be refined to achieve that objective. Okay. So, but what was important though was that he made three commitments. One was that in 2017, mm -hmm. he's going to move to an accommodative monetary policy stance, which means that interest rates will come down after achieving those objectives. Two, that M1, which is a narrow money, is going to be closely monitored because that is actually fueling inflation. If you look at the, the breakdown of money, money supply aggregates, M1 is a real culprit. And most importantly, in the guidance they gave, they, they did say and they recognized that high interest rates is eroding the confidence, one, and two, the stability of the financial system. In, in, in other words, the banking system, the MPL rates ratios are going to increase because of high interest rates. And the central bank is going to be watching carefully to ensure that the banking system is carefully guided so that we don't have a systemic crisis. Those were the three mainly strategic comments that were made. But as far as, and to be honest with you, foreign exchange management is not a job of the Monetary Policy Committee. It is targeting inflation, making sure that you bring inflation and create a stable economic environment. Wow. Um, so why do you think this, the, uh, the MPC made this decision at the end of the day? Because it sounds more like, you know, they were between the devil and the deep blue, yes. deep blue sea. It was a catch-22 situation. There's really nothing they could have done about it. No, that's why we say it's between a rock and a hard place. Mm. And the op like I said, the options were few, the choices were hard, and they couldn't have done anything better. But what is important to note is another thing. If you look at the slides that will come up any minute, there's what we call the inflationary gap. The inflationary gap is the difference between money supply and, and growth, uh, growth. That gap has increased. It has, money supply grew at 19%, while GDP grew at minus 2.26. So that gap is about almost 21%. Whilst the recession gap is narrowing, so the chances are that Nigeria will go into a slow but painful recovery. However, inflationary pressures will continue to persist. And that, that is very, a very important dynamic. So if your objective is to actually contain inflation, your interest rate, your contractionary policy, and your rate hike policy is not achieving that objective. As a matter of fact, the central bank alluded to the fact and confirmed today that even the, mon the monthly inflation rate has started increasing. But I want you to note something that the year-on-year -year inflation, the rate of difference has started declining, which means that to some extent the policies are working. There are Greek support policies, the increase in production, and more than anything else, Nigerians are beginning to change their consumer preference to buying less of everything. Mm -hmm. you know, not that they're changing, moving from, to import to locally produced goods. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a wish, yeah. but the reality is that because their purchasing power has dropped, then you are now beginning to see them buy, the, there's a contraction in demand, which is 
not so good for a recession. If we continue like this into well into the end of yes, into 2017, what difference will it make? No, let me tell you, the first quarter of 2017 is going to be a bit difficult, a bit difficult. But as you go into the second quarter, you're going to see the early signs of a recovery. But one thing you must note, because there was an allusion to the accretion of reserves, the price of oil in January 2016 was $27. The price of oil in January 2017 is $55. The price of oil is 100% higher this year than it was last year. The question I ask you is that, do you feel 100% better off this year than you were last year? If the answer is no, and that is the answer to most Nigerians, okay. then something is wrong with the way those foreign earnings are being deployed to the market. That's the question, because production has gone up now, price is up, that means total revenue is up, and we have cut back on our imported fuel imports and all of that. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, we should be seeing that. And that is why in our note that we put out the other day, we talked about the illusion of prosperity and the frustration of misery coming at the same time. But what is going to happen is that in the second half of the year, second quarter in particular, mm -hmm. some of these policies are going to be you know, bear fruit. And so both what the central bank is trying to achieve and what the fiscal authorities are working out we begin to, you begin to see material differences. It will also coincide with the borrowing plan of the federal government, the austere plan of conserving foreign exchange by the central bank. Most likely, I suspect that there will be a reform of the market process. The central bank said it, maybe alluded to it, they have to reform that process so that the market becomes a market where there's effective supply of foreign exchange to all Nigerians at whatever price the market can bear. Mr. Bismarck Rewani, once again, appreciate your coming tonight. Thank you for joining us on the Thank news. Thank you for having me.